So we have um, decided to change our big brain, our computer, and uh, we wanted to show you a way we did it, saving a lot of money. Uh, but uh, first, let's try to make a little introduction and uh, see why we need to change the computer. Okay, so as a system, we had the uh, Pro Tools HD2. And uh, basically, as you know, the, the technology is a little old and now the cost of the HDX card, which are the new versions, uh, went pretty down. And you can find some very good deals on the second-hand market. We had a nice opportunity to buy a second-hand uh, Avid HDX card. So basically, we had a chance to upgrade our Pro Tools system. But uh, before... Um, make you understand uh, uh, why it was so easy we'd like to give you an, an idea of what the routing was done in this studio so our core uh, the, the, the core of the interfaces are 32 channels um, through this uh, apogee we have two uh, AD16X and two DA16X which are soldered the outputs, the analog outputs, are soldered directly to the mixer. Okay, in this case now we're testing this one, but it's the MCI uh, that that is the main mixer. So now, as you know, we have uh, three ways to interact uh, with these interfaces. One through the AES ACE ABU connectors. The second one through the ADAT, and the third one through the symphony optional cards we have in the back so what we did we use the two digidesign digital 192 digital to connect pro tools and then so we connected the computer to these interfaces and as these interfaces are connected through the iSebu protocol to our analog mixer but uh, we also have the possibility to connect the same cards to a nice little RME Digiface USB. So if somebody's coming with a laptop or something like that, you can just install the drivers and we have 32. Okay, we cannot go to a higher rates. We only have to stay to 44 or 48 kilohertz, but we can go basically to 32 in, 32 out. And then the third way is through the Symphony cards if we have somebody instead with a Mac laptop, we can go Thunderbolt or even with the adapter to have Thunderbolt 3 or Th Thunderbolt 2 to, the, to a little expansion chassis which has the Symphony card inside that connects the, to the Apogee. So we basically have three different ways we can connect our analog stuff. So one wiring, one is perfectly wired, but three ways to get into it. One is through the iCBO. The second one is through the ADAT and the third one is to the Symphony card. So, so now we started to have some people wanted to produce with Ableton, with FL Studio, with uh, Reason. So we decided to change the system and that's why we made a computer so much more powerful. But the good thing with that, it was just a matter of changing the computer and we didn't have physically to change a wire here and that was absolutely priceless. So our investment was just in that room over there, the machine room, but here we didn't have to do anything and everything was working properly. As you can see here, we have an example of a session and, and look at that, it's a massive session and the new computer has a 10 processor, you know, 10, 10 cores, 20 threads, and they're not even basically moving around too much. And we have a huge DSP power here. Everything is going 96. We have a beautiful monitor. We have, and, 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 and it works absolutely fantastic with basically a little effort. And look at that now. We close Pro Tools. Okay, we can go and close Pro Tools. And we decided to run uh, Ableton Live. And the, f and the amazing thing is now Ableton Live, we recognize the HDX input and outputs that will run through the interfaces. Same thing we can do, look here, 
we can go in uh, in our preferences and uh, Asia driver output consideration 32 32 outputs and then input configuration 32 inputs and those are basically the output and inputs of our system so the good thing now is as as well as we did that we can uh, move and go to reason for example and if we are reason 11 we open reason preferences we go in audio and then is your avid driver is there we can see all the channels the 32 channels and in and out same thing with fruit uh, with the uh, fruity loops FL studio audio and again we have the audio driver that will give us all the channels we want bottom line which the HDX card we are not only running Pro Tools but we can also run uh, some other uh, different uh, softwares that uh, a lot of producers use having basically everything connected to the DG interfaces but let's go in the machine room now and see in the video that will follow you will see how we created this computer but basically the computer is perfect we just put it here because there's a little vent we, we left the more noisy vents just to avoid it conflicting with the, with the, with the sound and we just have basically this is the card one only cable is enough to go to 2 digi design 192 digital and we have 32 in 32 outs and then of course we have the eye locks on the back but basically we have everything set up and ready to go so you can stick with us and check the video it's probably pretty nice to see how we created it i took a day with my kids uh, it was a nice uh, weekend and uh, from scratch we basically created it you just order the pieces you can find in the description all the pieces we order and then simply see how we assemble it together of course this is this is not a tutorial just step by step you can find so many videos around but just to show that it's pretty po possible with an investment that is not that is a fraction of what it would cost you to buy a new Mac Pro uh, to build an amazing machine with so much processing power very versatile that you can use either for your Pro Tools rig and also with other native software so hope that could help and have an amazing day and thanks for supporting us okay guys so just bought uh, an amazing new uh, no not new sorry second hand HDX card look at this beauty you know let's try to make a computer uh, this time ourselves and uh, this is the mother board is a gigabyte Z490 Vision G so we're gonna start with the motherboard now and try to mount the new home for the HTX card and this is the the brain it's a i9 10900k which we will try to put from its little box to here you're gonna find plenty of videos about it but uh, it's a very nice processor and a very nice card now we're gonna install the vent so the processor is in the vent should be installed on top of it and we decide to go with Noctua, amazing Austrian company and um, yeah that's the baby so we're gonna try mount this on top of that amazing so now the fan is mounted the black plate is in place beautiful and now we're gonna install the two hard drives there's the system one two terabytes so we're gonna put all the nice software software instruments uh, all the plugins uh, samples everything in the system and then the one for recording that's gonna be a little smaller we don't need much but still there are two um, M2 hard drives they're gonna go straight onto the, the motherboard so much much faster than the SSD which were much much faster than the ATA 
which were much much faster than the SCSI disc, <laughs> the EDE, and then this, and before that the SCSI disc. And now is the beautiful runtime. They're gonna go on slot A2 and B2. So this one and this one. And uh, we have here two amazing uh, blocks of 32 gigabyte each. So for a total of 64 gigabytes and the speed of the RAM is 3200, so not bad. And now, after installing uh, all uh, the pieces, we finally gonna start uh, opening up the new case, which uh, we decided to take as a rack one, so it can go uh, pretty well, and put in the motherboard and start connecting everything. Now we found this amazing chassis, and uh, you see, we took away this, where we're gonna put this, just a CD-ROM, you never know, old stuff, and uh, this is the amazing uh, power supply from 750, nice and clean from Corsair, and then uh, that's the DVD, CD-ROM player, DVD, that's gonna go inside here. And after we put the DVD, in the power supply, we understand all of this cabling, how it goes. There are two, two fans on the back, one fan in the front, plus we have some connectors here, we have some external USB, you know, the reset, the power up. So once everything we figure out how it is, we can finally start assembling everything. And for last, our amazing uh, car will be going this way. So there's plenty of room for it. So now it's all connected. Power supply is connected to the motherboard. We found a way to connect all of the front panel um, switch and uh, USB uh, to, the, to the motherboard. And we connected the vents. Just make sure now that they're gonna work uh, the right direction. And basically, for now, we connected this one uh, outside, but we are ready to test and see if the BIOS is clicking in. So we are really ready to switch on the computer. Let's see how it's working. Okay, switch on here. Oh my God. I think it's on. Here we go. Yes. Wow. Oh, oh, it's working, baby. Yes. So amazing, we just started. So we put in um, a little USB key, uh, a, thumb, a thumb drive with uh, pre-installed Windows that you can download. You just buy a license of Windows 10. And uh, I, we bought it online and uh, just download it on the thumb drive. Now put stick in the thumb drive, restart it, and immediately ask me if I want to install Windows. So we're gonna try to install Windows, amazing. So everything's working. Before we set up the Windows 10, we update all the drivers, we update uh, everything we could update, everything working great. After that, we install Pro Tools Ultimate, and, uh, and now we're ready to test the card. So Pro Tools is in, now we're gonna put the card in, give him power, connect the card to one interface, and then we can st start to see if Pro Tools is working, in if the digitas pass and if everything is okay. After that, we can close everything back and uh, we're good to go. The computer is attached. The card is beautifully placed and there is a lot of air. Plus we have a vent uh, spinning this direction. Everything's gonna flow outside. And we connected the back of the card with an interface. We already installed. Uh, the software so be ready to go if it works and now guys this is absolutely incredible we just started one for two session and uh, just look at the system usage and we have uh, look at that 20 cores 20 cores completely empty and then of course uh, no memory nothing and the HD cards card that you can see everything, you can see all the DSP power here. So this machine is a bomb. Close up everything and we're ready to go, good to go. 
thanks for watching and if you like it like it